Uh, my name is Harish. Uh, last name is a little hard to pronounce, but uh, I can make it easy. It's Bhagavatula. Too many consonants there. So uh, today's topic is uh, role as a product manager in a startup versus a large corporation. I just want to quickly check how many of you work for like a large company. When I say large company, it's about like more than hundred million dollar revenue. Okay, good. And how about a small company? When I say small startup, is like revenue is about zero to ten million. Perfect, perfect. So the reason I'm asking for that is when you are in a small company, you'll always think about, you know what, why don't I work as a, in a, as a product manager for a big company because I will have so many resources, so many people that I can talk to, I can go to the customers, I can do all these things because I'm working for a small company. I don't have, you know, all, I have all these budget constraints and resource constraints. At the same time, when you're working for a large company, you feel that maybe I should work for a small company. There's a lot of action going on. Every day there's a challenge. Maybe I should do this, do that. You know what? There is no right or wrong answer. When you work for a small company or big company, you have equal share of uh, fun and also pain. So what I'll do is in next 15, 20 minutes or so, I'll walk you through my uh, career a little bit. I will not bore you guys, I promise. Um, and also talk about how that relates to working for a small company versus a big company. Okay. So uh, I started as a software engineer. Uh, I believe nowadays most of the product managers, they start as a product manager. I was talking to Carlos and he also mentioned just now that he started as a software engineer. So I started before 2004. I don't want to reveal that because you will know my age then. So I used to work for Oracle before 2004. Then sometime in 2004, 2005, I kind of uh, figured out that I wanted to get into product management. So I was dabbling a few things at Oracle. And end of 2005, I quit Oracle uh, to go to that greener pasture, right? You know, a small company, you know what? You know, I can do a lot more things. So I jumped ship and joined a company called Skyr. This was that small company, $7 million to $10 million company in Menlo Park. I joined there. I was a product manager there. And then uh, in 2012, that company got acquired by Oracle. Uh, not that I made a lot of money. If I would have made a lot of money, I wouldn't be here. Uh, but the uh, company got bought over, which was good. Happy ending. Then I got into Oracle again. Right? You know, you will always have the deja vu, right? You're working for Oracle. So if I go back to my, uh, see my career for 13, 14 years of, or actually more than that, 20 years now, uh, if I see all my, uh, the years of uh, work experience that I have, most of it is with Oracle right now, on and off. Then uh, 2012 to 2017, I worked there for, uh, at Oracle. Then recently, I quit Oracle. Before, uh, well, actually, when I was introduced, um, it was said that I know I work for Oracle, but when I started this process of you know, uh, presenting this, I was at Oracle, but in the last couple of months, I quit. Now I'm partnering with a small consulting company uh, to build new products. So that is a little bit of my background. The reason I'm talking about this background is it is very much related to what I'm going to present again today. So when you're working for a small company versus a large company, right, the roles that you play is very much dependent upon how the organization is structured. So when you talk about a small company, the structure in the organization is very important, where you are in that organization. So for example, the small uh, company structure, well, this is, I'm not saying that this is a generalized structure for all the small companies, but Typically, this is what you would see in those companies where uh, it's about like you know, $10 million. You have some budget constraints and resource constraints. How many people are you going to hire? So you will have a product management department. Then there are product managers on that, under that. If you are lucky, you will have a UX person. Otherwise, the product manager will be the one who will be designing things. Then, of course, you'll have sales executives, 
all the VPs and other people. Then you have your sales team and professional services, all the implementation people. Especially I'm talking from a product company point of view, not services or anything. And then uh, from a engineering point of view, of course, that is a bigger chunk, right? Because if you're a product company, you will have a lot of people there. Then you will have all the development folks, engineering folks, and of course the DevOps and other people part of that organization. Then you will have your uh, customer support, which is all the support engineers who will be talking to your customers. And again, if you are lucky, you will have more than one person. Otherwise, there will be one person supporting for the entire product. Now, if you compare that with a larger organization, let's say like Oracle. Again, this is not a generalized one, but you, know, you can typically see how people are, you know, companies are structured. You will have a product management executive. Most likely, UX will not be part of that. I'll explain why it is and why it is good, why it is bad. So typically, product managers are part of that group. Sales executives, of course, you will have all your account managers who are going and selling the product. And consulting services, where they are doing all the consulting, professional services, and other stuff. And then you will see engineering executives, like development team. Again, depending on the company, most likely UX will be under engineering team. Of course, you can always argue about that, whether it's right or wrong, but at least the companies that I have seen, in this case Oracle, it was under engineering organization. Now, if you see here, one thing that is missing, which is, in my opinion, a key component is, or key department, is customer support. If you see in a small organization, it is part of the company, or it is part of that uh, small company, right, in a uh, business. But if you go to a bigger company, customer support is not part of your overall, your organization, because bigger companies, they streamline that customer support, so these people will be supporting like 100 different project, uh, products, and they'll be sitting somewhere, and they'll be taking calls, and if there is an issue, that will be sent back into your product management team or engineering team. The reason why I'm saying that is it is different. There's a uh, information that will not flow into your organization as a product manager. I'll elaborate on that in a second. But you have to see that the key difference, how these structures are built in the companies, and how does it affect you as an individual, as a product manager, and the decisions that you are taking. Again, I'm not saying that is right or wrong. For bigger companies, that's how they want to operate, because that makes sense for them. Because you have all these customer support people under one organization, they streamline it, how they receive all these issues and other stuff from the companies, versus if you're a small company, you have only one person most likely supporting those customers. Now, the one, now that we saw the uh, structure of uh, a company, like organization structure in a small company versus a large company, Let's see what are the different roles and responsibilities of all these people, right? And I'll kind of highlight what are the roles that a PM or a product manager would typically play in a smaller company versus a bigger company. So on the right side, if you see, or on the other side, if you see that is a smaller company where product management, we talked about it just now, a product management group you will have the product managers and UX, UI designers part of that. Now if you observe, there is a star right next to that. That means you will be playing that role constantly, most of the time. Product manager, of course, for sure. But UX and UI, you will be the UX, UI designer also, quite possible, because the company might not afford that, right, that person or people to actually do the UX, UI designs, or even the visual designs, or usability kind of you know, flows, wireframes, and other stuff. Versus if you take the sales executive team, again, I'm still on the smaller uh, company side, you will have the sales team, and then you will have professional services and other people part of that. Again, the sales team is also highlighted here, and it has a star right next to that. The reason for that is, most likely you will be part of that group too because you are the product champion. No one else knows the product. You will be going out and you will be participating as part of the sales demos. 
you will be getting that call a day before saying that, hey, can you come out to Vancouver or fly down like five hours and have a nap for like two hours and give that demo because there is someone waiting for that demo. Like, you know, sales people are like, you know, you have only a handful of people and they are not equipped with all kind of training material so that they can go and demo that. But on the other side, if you see a large organization, you will be a product manager, but most likely the UX, UI team, you will not be doing that because company have some money, so they will go and hire people who can do that work, right? And sales executives, uh, and under that group, sales team and sales consultants, definitely you will not be demoing that. You will not be called late night and ask you to fly out you know, uh, thousands of miles to demo because that will never happen. It might, but most likely it will not happen because you have a sales team, dedicated sales team that is trained to do that. Okay. Now from an engineering point of view, well, you will have quality development organization who are you know, all the software engineers and the DevOps, maintaining all the servers and everything. Again, you will also be, you might be playing a quality role as well, a quality engineer, because you know the product, right? Again, resource constraints. So you might be playing that role of testing the product, making sure that it is working from a functional point of view, because again, you're not having that much money to actually go and hire them. And the interesting part is the customer support. Most likely, as I said earlier, you will have one person supporting the customer organization. At least when I joined Sky, there was only one person, and I'm the only PM. So if there was anything coming through, I had to stand right next to that person and explain what the product is going to do, right? So you might be playing that role as well. So if you look at the small organization, most likely you will be playing multiple roles. If you go into the larger organizations, consulting services, that's a big cash cow for them. So they will have a different department for that. They will be trained for consulting purpose. So they will go and you will have a team that will be doing that. You will not be, they will not be relying upon you to support, do anything like that. Engineering side, of course, again, you will have uh, people who will be doing the quality uh, uh, related functionality and also the development and UX and UI. So when you go to the larger organization, you as a product manager might not be playing all those roles. But as a PM in a smaller company, you will be playing multiple roles for sure. I like this picture because if you see on the other side, on the smaller organization, most likely the clock will be half and you'll be filling all the other numbers as a product manager. The reason for that is, again, this is a product company. We're talking about a product company. Product is the bread and butter of that company and you will be the rock star. I can guarantee that. If not, make sure that you are the rock star because everything has to deal with the product. Everything stops with you, and everything starts with you. I know a lot of salespeople talk about it, saying that they have to sell the product. Development feels that, yes, I have to code it, otherwise product cannot be sold. But you are the brains behind that. The product manager is the brain behind that. So you have to fill all those gaps and make sure that the product is working properly. In a larger organization, most likely you will have all those departments that we have mentioned earlier so that you know you will get that support again the reason i'm highlighting all this is not to say that small companies are good or large companies are good it is just what to expect as an individual if you are stepping into a larger organization and you want to be a product manager what to expect from a small company versus a large company getting into like what you typically do, right, in a small organization as a product manager. Of course, you'll be writing all the BRDs and MRDs and other stuff. Again, depending on uh, what kind of product, you will get into the details of that, but typically people would, as a product manager, you're expected to do that. You're going to work with the development team, for sure. Uh, you will have customer interaction and validation. A lot of people have a notion that as I said earlier in the beginning, as a 
if a product manager, if you're working for a big company, your expectation is that you'll be talking to the customers day in, day out. Well, it might be happening, but it doesn't happen that often. The reason for that is because how you interact, how the company is laid out, how, what can they share with the customers, what they cannot. There will be a lot of these regulations and all kind of things that will come into play, whether you can share some information with your customer or not. I'll just give you inside information of Oracle. If you are building a functionality for a particular customer, you cannot tell that to that customer till the day before it gets released because of all kind of rev recs and other stuff. But as a small company, you have that leeway, right? So you will have more interaction with the customers, for sure. You will be part of the sales demos. You will be doing some kind of a short release cycles because again, you are a small company, right? You want to have those functionalities come out quickly. You might be playing that UX role and even a scrum master also, quite possible. Because again, resource constraints, budgetary constraints, you might be playing that role. And you might also be implementing the product and supporting your customer support. So you'll be doing a lot of these things. What you might not do is pricing the product. The reason why I said specifically pricing the product is because in a smaller company, you will have all your CEO and you know, all the VPs and other people who would be kind of thinking about how to price the product, how do we want to give that to the customer, how do they want to kind of, because it's a small company, right? They want to make sure that there is, they make that number, right? You will definitely not have unlimited resources. You will have pretty limited resources. You got to work with them. Uh, I still remember there was no, right now we have Jira. I mean, of course, Jira is there for quite some time. But when I started my product management career, there was nothing like Jira. There was nothing like a backlog, uh, grooming, or anything. When we picked up uh, Agile back in 2007, 2008, we had to use Excel. So every single time we have to sort it, we have to move that, cut and paste, and move it up. Well, we can use the numbering and other stuff, sorting, but it, there was no tool. Now we can actually grab things up and down, right? Uh, you can see the burn down charts and other stuff. There was nothing like that before. I'm not saying that you cannot afford, or a small company cannot afford that right now, but again, it will be limited. Access to PM tools, again, those tools that you can use to analyze how many uh, features that you're releasing, how much, uh, whether you know, doing things like A-B testing, things like that, right? You will be pretty limited in from a, a small company point of view. In a large organization, of course, again, starting with the design development, you can definitely be part of that. You will be working with the development team. The third item is very important. You have to follow a lot of process and procedures. Again, I'm not saying that it's bad. It is just how it is. You have to follow them. You have to follow, again, giving an example of Oracle, uh, if a product has to be released, released or a feature has to be released, if it is getting out, let's say, take November 1st, it has to come out, then the code freeze is on October 1st. That's it, you cannot put any more features there. Well, product managers, we tend to put more things, right? We like to put more things. So we, uh, there was an incident where, like, you know, in Skyr, back the small company I used to work, we used to put in features like, it's good and bad, even a week before. Because we had to push that out, right? Because we have that customer commitment. In larger organizations, it's slightly different. So you got to deal with those processes and procedures as a PM. Standards and compliance, big thing, right? Because again, if you do not follow certain standards in a bigger organization, you will be flagged. You will see that on a in a paper saying that, so and so company, let's say Oracle, does not follow this ADA compliance or the, whatever it is, right? You know, this product doesn't follow. So you got to follow the standards and uh, compliance and company wide standards for UI and all those kind of things. So there will be a lot more things that you need to, as a PM, you have to follow. Access to PM tools, absolutely. You will have all kind of things. As a matter of fact, you might have two or three. You got to pick which one is better for you. And pricing, sometimes you might get involved in that. Because uh, again, there will be organizations where uh, at, at 
at least at Oracle, we used to have a different uh, organization for pricing, but as a PM, you got to give your suggestions, like you know how many people are going to be accessing it, things like that. So they will come out with a pricing model so that uh, you can see whether it makes sense for you or not. So you might get involved somewhat into that pricing stuff. Custom, customer interaction and validation, most likely you will not be doing that. Again, as a PM, you would be thinking like, how can I build a feature without talking to a customer? And again, it depends on what kind of company it is, what is the culture of the company. Most likely you will not be, because again, all these rev rec issues and uh, when you work for these bigger companies like Oracle, like you want to go and talk to a customer. You cannot just say, I want to talk to the CEO of that you know, company, right? Or the VP of that company. You want to talk to a person who is a product champion there. Guess what happens in a bigger organization, right? When a company is selling, let's say a company like Oracle selling it to a other organization, they want to sell it from top down. Typically that's what happens. So the CTO or whoever it is, they will uh, approve that PO to actually buy the product and that's it, it's done. So you do not have a uh, relationship with the people who are actually using the product. In a smaller company, it's other way around, right? You have to work with them. You've got to make sure that they are happy. You will be working day in, day out. So if you want to talk to a customer about requirements, in a smaller company, you know exactly who to talk to. For a larger company, you got to really dig into a lot of things to actually get to the person who is responsible for managing the product on the other side. So it, sometimes you won't get that information. Shorter release cycles, again, as I said, if your uh, delivery time of the product feature is going to be uh, re uh, requiring this one month of code freeze and testing and other stuff, think about the short release cycle. It will be at least, the release cycle will be at least four to five months. Getting that squeezed into one month or two months is kind of, again, companies have done that. Like, you know, if you consider like Workday or Salesforce, they have done that. But that's a cultural thing, right? It, it has to be done internally, right? It cannot be just done overnight. So bigger companies, if they want to get into those shorter cycles, similar to small companies, then it has to be a cultural thing. Customer demos, most likely product managers will not do it. A lot of people talk about it, but most likely because you have a sales team. They are paid for that, so they will be doing that. And implementation, you will not be doing that. The reason why I'm talking about implementation is because as a product manager, when you design certain things, when you go out, the customer is actually, or you know, the feature is being used by the customer during that implementation phase and of course after they go live. So if you are part of that, you know exactly what worked and what did not. Because as a product manager, it's key. You need to know that. You don't want to come to know about that later on when they file like half a dozen bugs, right? So you want to know that up front, or at least as part of the implementation, how they are configuring it, how are they using it. So if you are part of it, it's good, right? So again, I'm not saying that large companies are bad, only go for the small companies. It is just how they are, right? <clears throat> so the key takeaway from this old, the entire my presentation is that, again, it's not like you know you should work for a big company or a small company. It all depends on who you are. Some people are very comfortable working for a small company. Some people are very comfortable working for a big company. I started with a working for a big company as a programmer. I did not like the way product management group was working in that organization. So I left. I joined a small company. I was there for quite some time. I liked the way it was, it worked out for me because I was, I wanted to be a rock star, right? So I kind of, I was right in the center of action. I used to uh, stand up and whenever there was a release, of course we all know that when there is a release, there is no release without a bug, right? Most likely. So people used to call not that I want to do that every day, but they used to call and figure out, find out like, you know, why it did not work. So we had to stand up, talk to them. So there was some sense of responsibility and ownership. Again, you will have that in this larger company as well, but that responsibility will be slightly different. You might be thinking about much bigger things and 
because you have a lot of resources. Smaller companies, every single thing matters. So from uh, my side, the key takeaways are like, work for any company is fine, small or big, as long as you like it, right? What do you like? What is your style, right? Before, I'm not saying that you should do this right now, but if you are planning to shift or if you are planning to think about you know, going from the small to big or big to small, make a checklist. Make a checklist and see what is your working style. Do you like? And then check against that working style whether the bigger company is going to uh, give you that or a smaller company is going to give you that. Right? And again, if you're starting as your career as a PM, I would suggest that work for a uh, large company. The reason for that is you will have a lot of resources so you can learn certain things uh, and then you can jump into a smaller company. Um, that is just my preference, not that it has to be uh, done for everyone like that, but if you want to start your career as a PM, then go for a, go to a large company. Because small companies, there will be a lot of things. As I said, you have to wear a lot of hats. And if your style is not that, if you are not like, you know, every day get up and uh, you have to do that firefighting, right? So then it's not for you. And that's what it's going to be in a small company every single day. It's like a rat race. But if you are going for a bigger company, even if you are starting your career, then it will be, you will get adjusted to that PM type of work. You know what to do from a design point of view and things like that. So you will be able to get used to that lifestyle, I mean, in a sense, like from a PM point of view. If you're transitioning from engineering to, uh, then any company is fine. Uh, I prefer a small company because I did that. Uh, again, that is because um, as an engineer, uh, the mindset might be slightly different because, you know, you, have, you know how the deadlines work and everything. So getting into a smaller company, you will be able to manage to some extent. But again, uh, I would relate it back to the other uh, point number three, which is if you're starting a, a PM role, and again, you're moving from engineering side, then again, go to a larger company, because that's where uh, you, you can learn a lot of things. If you are planning to small, wear, go to a small company, then be ready to wear different hats. Every single day you are going to have new challenges, new things coming at you, new things being thrown at you, and you will not even expect what those things are. You don't even know what those things are, but you've got to be ready to pick them up. And if you are working for a large company, be prepared to work with less information. The reason for that is you have so many departments. Information is kind of segregated by different departments. You might not even know if the product that you have designed being sold to some customer maybe for like, you know, next month or two months because that's how things are. There are way too many people there. So the information might not come to you immediately. In a smaller company, you will get that information right away because there will be some celebration. But in the small, bigger companies, you will not have that. So be prepared for that information as well. Okay. Well, that's what I wanted to share with you guys, my experience. If you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to take them. I, I can't hear you properly. We, uh, there's a lot of noise here. Sorry. Uh, think about uh, somebody fresh out of college, uh, small startup environment, working X, Y, and Z outside of the discipline that you originally went into. Uh, how do you kind of hone in all those skills, all the different things you've done, and focus it back towards the job? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I came to the front now. I'm this. <laughs> uh, talk about say newly out of college into a startup environment 
came in for one idea of a role, um, doing X, Y, and Z beyond that. How can you refine that and focus it and like, hone it in towards, say, a larger company like Google, uh, Microsoft, anything? So if you're starting in a startup company and if you're trying to learn, I mean, you will learn a lot of things from a different department, right? But again, if you are jumping into a bigger organization after that, again, if you are trying to continue your product management career, then you have a lot more knowledge about how other departments are working. So definitely you can leverage that in extending your you know, uh, reach into other uh, departments. For example, like you can go to the sales team and talk about how do you uh, plan on you know, uh, presenting the product, right? Sales, of course, they will present it in a certain way. But how do you uh, show that there is a value with this product? So you can actually take that because you have played that role before. You have done that before. So you can actually educate them from a product perspective. What is the best way to sell it to the customers? How do you interact with the customers? I'm not saying that in a larger organization, sales will not know how to do that, but the mindset that you will develop in a small organization is a is lot more, is a lot different. You will have some kind of a relationship with those customers. It's not just you sell it and you get your sales quota. You are actually having some relation with the customers that you build that in the small companies because that's, you have to do that. You have no choice. So you can actually carry forward that information and kind of educate other people as well. Same thing with development. You can actually work with the development. Typically in a larger organization, development kind of things about like, you know, much bigger stuff, you know, they might be thinking about, let's do this revamp of all this stuff for next six months or one year or anything, or let's go into microservices of all our application. It'll take us another year to build the entire product. Well, that might work for the company, but at the end of the day, you all got to release certain features also. So you can talk to the development team how quickly you can actually come out with certain features uh, while not compromising on those uh, you know, uh, microservices or greater things, right? So you can actually educate them. So as a product manager, you can carry forward those small ideas that you have uh, developed, or rather actually big ideas that you have developed in small companies and carry forward that into the bigger companies as well. So you can educate other people from other departments. job search perspective, how do you position yourself differently as a looking for a job in a small company versus a large company? What are the top qualities that uh, hiring managers in large companies looking for as opposed to small companies? So typically when you are looking for a, applying for a uh, job in a small company, right? I mean, from a job description point of view, they will not give you all these details. They will not ask you these questions whether you can do this or not. They'll just ask you, are you a product manager? Are you, do you know how to design the products and other stuff? But as part of, let's say, interview process or anything, right? One thing that you want to show for a small company is that uh, you are willing to uh, go that extra mile when you're working for a small company because that's what is expected because every single day you will be, as I mentioned earlier, you will be working uh, more than what is expected out of a product manager. For a larger organization, you don't have to do that because you actually have other departments. So if you go for an interview and someone says, uh, the interviewer asks you, as a, in a small company, will you be okay demoing the product? Will you be okay standing in front of the customer and presenting it? And if you want to do that, then you should be saying yes, right? No, of course, you're not afraid of that and you want to do that. Um, but in a large organization, 99% they will not ask you that question because most likely that opportunity might or might not even come. So they will not even think from that angle. They'll ask you more from how do you collaborate with your uh, development team, how do you write your design documents, how do you kind of uh, uh, use these tools and other stuff, how do you follow the procedures and other stuff. It's not like you know, wearing multiple hats. So you've got to be prepared for that. In the job description, you might not have that. Absolutely. Only in the interview, they'll definitely ask you that question. So are there things that large companies are looking for that small companies are not looking for? 
Yeah, so large companies, as I said, like they will be looking more from a uh, procedures point of view, right? You know, do, have you followed uh, a perfect agile methodology or a waterfall? How did you gather the requirements from the customer? They'll ask you that, but you might not be doing it. But um, so procedures kind of thing, right? And how do you kind of hand it over to the development team? In small organizations, you might be sitting right next to them, right, for all practical purpose. Here, it might be you are throwing it out to a different country, and they'll be developing somewhere else. So they'll be asking you how you interact from that angle. Yeah, so if you do not have a software background, you can definitely become a product manager. There is, there is no, uh, I won't say, uh, there is no uh, barrier for that. I have seen over the last 12 years, I have seen people who have moved from customer support into product management, uh, sales into product management. Uh, as a matter of fact, we actually worked with some customers. So our software that we used to build was, uh, or rather, we still build it, is for the uh, construction industry. So we build project management for construction industry. And we have hired people from the client side. They joined our product management department because they know the subject. So it's not that you have to be a software engineer. As long as you will be able to understand the business needs and translate that into something which makes more sense from a product point of view. You, Product, when I say product point of view, you should be able to have that vision of where the product has to go. Not every single detail. It doesn't need to be like every button and other stuff. That's not the point. The point is that if I lay down this product for next one year, what are all the things that I should be able to add to this product and incrementally so that it benefits to the, to the customer? So that's the key thing, right? So if you, if you want to build, like a perfect example is a, playing with Legos, right? If I give you Legos, and if you can, if I say that, okay, this is the shape of the entire thing that you need to build, like a car or something, and if I give you all the pieces, can you put that together without looking at a manual? Then you're a perfect product manager. Because, and that can be anyone, doesn't matter. That can be a, a customer support person, a quality assurance person. Actually, as a matter of fact, I hired a quality assurance person from uh, quality department into product management because they showed that inclination, right? They can think about the product. They can think like, you know, how do I, how can I design this feature so that it is useful for the customer? So it doesn't need to be a software engineer. Software engineer gives you a little more advantage, but it is also a disadvantage because when you turn from a software engineer to a product manager, at least I did that. I took an oath that I will not talk about software. Because if you go to engineer and talk about, oh, your code is not good, then they'll come back and you say that you are a product manager. You're not supposed to talk about the code. That's my job. Your job is to give me the designs. So there'll be some uh, confusion there. So in a startup, you trust the engineering to take the right decision to pick a product uh, for the engineering. But since you said product managers, very much they have to also work with engineering. So that's why I was asking. Absolutely, it will help you. Definitely. And again, it depends on the product. If you are talking about a product which is based on, let's say, AI, or you know, all the uh, NLPs and the new stuff going on, right? then absolutely having that idea makes perfect sense. But if you are designing a product which is, it does not involve all that stuff, if you are designing something like, take an example, cards.com. Right, simple example, or something else, then you don't have to get into the details of uh, how the architecture is being done. Am I using WebLogic server, or am I using Struts, or am I using something else? It doesn't really matter, as long as it is scalable. You need to trust your engineering department at that point of time. So it all depends on what you're trying to build. Sure. Uh, when you join a small organization for a product, you Hello, my name is Ashutosh. Uh, when you join a product, uh, small product, uh, 
as a, as a, in a small company, as a product manager, uh, you mentioned about like you need to do the UX design and all those kind of things. So, what are the qualities the small quality, small companies are looking at, which actually can prove that you can do the UX design, although like you have not really done the the actual designs to use the UX tools, but you understand how the user interface works and things like that. So, how do you deal with that? So. A part of it is because you have no choice for a small company because companies do not have enough funding to actually hire someone, right? Um, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, as I mentioned, like I, I quit Oracle and we are starting a new product company. The first thing that I'm trying to hire is a, well, actually I'm there part of that company, but first thing is we want to get a UX person. I don't want to design it. I know how to design it, but I don't want to, at least the wireframes and other stuff. I don't want that. I want them to do that. But if you join a company and the company uh, depends on the resource constraints and budgetary constraints, then you will be playing that role. Uh, do you have that skill set to do that? Uh, that's what I understand your question is. Uh, you might not have it, but you might have to acquire. But at the same time, you're not expected to use all kind of sketch and other tools, uh, Auxure and other stuff to actually lay down all the graphics and other stuff. It, it's, you're not expected to do that. You are kind of filling that gap to make sure that, again, all those things that I mentioned, like as a quality assurance engineer or a support engineer, you are playing that role. That's not your job, day-to-day -day job, but you will be doing that day in, day out because of whatever constraints, right? So. Uh, of course, company has to realize that you are not uh, meant for that. Your role is not that, and you, they have to invest in those people to actually, uh, you know, get those people so that they can help you out with. But I'm not saying that that should be the case for every single company. But be prepared for that. Okay. Thank I'm just curious, uh, a lot of the big companies require small companies. Just, what was your experience in terms of what, how quickly you were simulated and the, the process changed from required <laughs> by Oracle? Uh, should I tell you the truth? <laughs> um, it's, it's actually, uh, it's good, but it is painful too. Because the cultural difference is there. There's a big cultural difference. I'll, I'll just give you a short story how it kind of uh, you know, played out uh, last uh, eight, nine years. Then you'll kind of understand how the culture kind of affects that. So uh, we got bought over in 2012. Four years before, there was another company. It was not a startup company. It was a sensible company. And that was bought over by Oracle in 2008. The company name is Primavera. They're in Philadelphia. It's all scheduling software and other stuff. So if you're into the scheduling and construction industry, you would know that. That's a de facto standard. Well, that was a small company. The culture of that company was pretty much like, you know, I would compare it to Skyr. At least that's what I heard. When they got acquired in 2008, and by the time we got acquired 2012, and I got into like, you know, 2013 and knowing all the people, their culture has changed completely. So at point in 2008, if whatever they were feeling that, hey, you know what, we got into this big organization, how do I adjust into this? We had the same feeling in 2013, but with these people who actually got acquired in 2008. So you will change in the bigger organization. And if you change and if you want to live with that, you will live with that for a lifelong, unlike me who will second round quit from Oracle and do something else. But uh, definitely, uh, but there are a lot of people who like that thing as well, that security and um, that kind of you know, uh, atmosphere, because it's slightly different, right? In bigger corporations, it's completely different. It's not like small company where, uh, it's like you know, living in a uh, downtown versus a small community, right? You know every other person, uh, downtown you might not know who it is, right? So it is a, a different cultural thing. But it is good and bad, mixed feelings. Did a lot of people change when that happened for your company? A uh, lot of people left or you mean like changed from a... Left, left the company. Right? 
few people definitely left because they could not just take it. That was like, you know, year, year and a half, a lot of people left. Just because, again, cultural-wise, you do not know uh, what's happening, right? Uh, that's just because they cannot, they do not see themselves in that organization. Because, again, in a small company, uh, for us, uh, particularly, we were all in Menlo Park, so we were all in one building. So we were right next to each other. At Oracle, people are like, everywhere. You can work from home, you are like you know, some other country and some other place. So people might not have that interaction with other people anymore, right? So they don't feel that comfort and they left. Uh, people left in a year, two years, three years, depending on their, uh, what they felt is right. Yeah, just a small observation. Earlier you were saying that the decisions at the top level are being uh, driven in a larger company, but the transformation that is happening is they are empowering the, the lowest level of people to drive the decision making upwards. So it is actually reversing the whole navigation as decisions are coming from bottom because they are empowering their employees to decide and then recommend it upwards so that they just simply sign it. That's what is happening, the latest uh, evolution. Uh, I agree with you, but also I think it all depends on the company, again, company culture, right? Uh, if the companies are, uh, the people who are in that company, if they bring that kind of culture from ground up, or they adopt that over a period of time and kind of nurture that culture, absolutely. Uh, at least I did not see that at Oracle. Hopefully it will happen, but it is just makes bad. It depends. Which is, yeah, which is which is good to see. I hope that uh, goes forward, and uh, we will see that everywhere. Absolutely. So um, I have a question about you know the product managers. Like sometimes some people say that it's better for them not to know anything about development engineering. The farther they are, the better the partitioning is. They can focus on stories and what user needs are. And sometimes some people say that no, you have to be aware of technology. You have to be aware of engineering. So there is that, that you know, uh, you, you find those two schools of thoughts, right? Now, startups versus large companies, how does this play out? Uh, at least I'll just go by my experience. Um, I feel that product managers should know enough about uh, what is going on in engineering side. Again, uh, as earlier I was saying that it depends on the product, right? Uh, for example, the products that we were building at Oracle, which was pretty much similar to what we did at the startup, uh, there were things that were getting built up from a product feature point of view. So for example, we were supposed to build a portfolio optimization right, for all these companies where they need to pick which projects that they need to do. There's a portfolio management kind of functionality. Development would think about that using some kind of you know optimization engines and other stuff, but as product managers, we were able to uh, reach out to bigger org like you know, other resources and figure out that there was some kind of a linear programming software that was available in Oracle which we can leverage to actually optimize that. That is just purely because of we were doing some research on certain things. Now. You can suggest that to development, or you can be quiet and they can figure it out. It depends on how you want to get involved. But again, you're not telling development that you pick that, or you're not saying that uh, just code it this way. You're actually saying that my requirement is this, this might solve it, or you bring an alternative for that. So it depends on how you kind of interact with them. Is it different in startup? Yeah, startup, absolutely. So uh, in startup, you will be literally sitting with them and saying that, okay, use this because that makes sense because you are actually looking from a price point of view, licensing and other stuff as well. Uh, not that everything will be falling into your bucket, 
development will be looking into how do you get the license and other stuff for that. But uh, absolutely, for uh, bigger organizations, it's slightly different. Yeah. Small, you will be involved in completely. Absolutely. So I love to start a relatively small. Um, so, and then they're extremely spread away. So I'm not a PM, but then I find myself spreading the informal PM hat. Uh, a lot of these things that you said. So plans to stick from here to a bigger company. Um, so putting a structure on the things that I'm doing, do you have any advice on that? So you said you are in the engineering right now. Um, yeah. Engineering and wearing those multiple hats. So if you want to transition into a bigger company, absolutely, because you know you can start being a product manager in the bigger company itself. You don't have to be in the smaller company. But the structure wise, of course, you are trying to put all the things around uh, into one basket, which makes more sense from a product management point of view. Uh, not from a coding perspective, but how you are kind of solving the business need in your role right now. If you can translate that when you're talking to you know, bigger companies, right, then it'll be easy for them to relate that, okay, you can be a product manager, right? A again, uh, market is changing and industry is changing where they're not saying that you are an engineer, I cannot get you, uh, hire you because you are engineer, we need a product manager. There's nothing like that. People, people, things have changed a lot. So you can definitely, you might not be like a senior product manager, but definitely you can, you will be able to get into product management field by showing that you have uh, that uh, understanding of the business side. It doesn't need to be your own product, it, just in general, right? So you will be able to kind of relate to that, not just from bits and bytes, but more from a use case point of view. How can you relate to that? How can you solve a customer need, right? Overall solutions and other stuff. So that's what people are looking for, or at least that's what I'm looking for, or anyone as a product manager who's trying to hire another product manager, whether you have that vision of like, you know, can I connect all these things from a solution point of view, sell it, or at least, you know, uh, kind of uh, solve a use case, right? So that's what we are looking for. So what I sometimes think is that at the start, we uh, sacrifice processes. Yes. But then in the bigger companies, they'll sometimes look for these. Uh, but yes, absolutely. I totally agree with you. Um, they will ask you about the processes. You have no choice. But um, as a coming from a smaller company, you can always explain that these are the processes that you have followed uh, from a whatever is possible, right? You know, I'm sure you would have followed some process, like some kind of a design document or something. Uh, it's not going to be like a, something written on a napkin, right? It'll be, there is some document. So you can actually talk about that process itself. Of course, bigger organizations follow much on a larger scale, a lot more things. They cannot expect that you are following all those things in a smaller organization because you've got to be nimble, right? So you can always talk about those things. Hey, Harish, uh, I came late, but I'm, I'm not sure you already talked about this or not. So when you're shifting the question to the other side, when I'm trying to shift it from a corporate PM to a first or second PM in a small company, I mean, how can we make sure we can see it in a strategy way still, but this while still keeping the focus on your products? Because in a big company, you might focus on your specific products and the area. When you're shifting to a one or six, First or second PM in a small company, you might think about for a more strategic way, right. but still not without putting focus on the specific products you own. Yeah. So, um, smaller company, um, if you definitely need to understand what are the other things that are in play, right? From a uh, product perspective, if it is only one product, then it is uh, it's one to one, so it's okay. But if you have multiple products, then I would definitely say that as a part of your job uh, is to kind of understand how your product plays along with the other products pretty quickly because that is critical. Whatever decisions you make is going to affect that. And again, in larger organizations, you have someone else to kind of play that role and kind of you know guide you that. Here, you have to step forward 
whoever it is, whoever has that information, you need to reach out and get all that information. If you are the first or second PM, then whoever is the person who is like being uh, are leading that product so far, right? Whether it is a co-founder or a founder or an engineer, VP or whoever it is, right? Sit with them. Sit with your support organization to get to that knowledge so that you have that information, so that the decisions you're making kind of uh, trans or does not affect that particular part, right? So that's a key, definitely.